and, and you're just kind of looking, you're just waiting, right? They're, they're observing all of these things because all of these things give them answers to questions that they can't ask you directly. No one's, once again, no one's going to ask you, do you have other offers? They might, but you don't even have to answer that question. You can just be like, well, yeah, I do. Or I'm considering my options, right? There's ways to give diplomatic, in every language, in Korean and Japanese and English, there's diplomatic ways of not answering a question. There's very, way, there's ways you can skillfully, in fact, especially, English is a much more direct language than Japanese or Korean, right? In those languages, there's so many different ways of not answering a question, right, clearly, giving a very vague response. And you're allowed to give those vague responses if someone asks you, because it's inappropriate for a company to ask you, do you have other offers? Companies might, but it's very, very inappropriate. And you really don't have to answer that question, right? So they're trying to find out by lo looking at your confidence level, right? So that's really, so the important thing is to remember that when you're interviewing, be confident, right? It's very, very important. Everything about you, the way you shake someone's hands, the way that you sit, right? The fact that your suit is, you just dry cleaned it last week, your shirt is ironed, there's no lint. You know, isn't that stuff terrible? Like, you know, when you have your big coat, when you're in your suit and there's like lint, the little white stuff? You know, get a lint remover. You have to look good. I always tell, even, even if Kohen was here, I would tell her, like, if you're, if you're a girl, Part of it is you should look good. Don't go crazy on wearing makeup and stuff. I mean, guys don't have to worry about this stuff. But it's important to look good. You know, like, do your hair. You know, like, you know, someone, remember one thing. You should be a memorable person, right? It's like this, a good candidate. Someone that, if you interview 50 people, right, and you think, and then at the end of the day, you think about, okay, of the 50 people that I interviewed, who's the first person that comes to mind, right? So sometimes, like, you know, you can, sometimes you can say things that are sort of, not controversial, right, but this is kind of, and this is more, I would say this is more, more international, but I don't think you can do this in Korea or Japan, it's a little bit different over there. But like, I remember when I was interviewing, my, um, the CEO's wife, right, the CEO's wife, she was also like the chief operations officer of the company. She was, she was the last person to interview me. So she was a nice lady, but she was kind of strict. She, she was kind of like a school teacher. She had a, sort of like she resembled a school teacher. So she asked me, um, you know, what is something that you regret, something that you regret doing uh, in life? And, and she said, I don't want to, I don't want to hear I don't want to, everyone says I don't regret anything. So I don't want to hear that. I actually want to hear about something that you regret. So I, I actually told her, um, I always regretted how I broke up with my first girlfriend. Because I think I was, I was too young and I wasn't thinking properly. And if I had a chance to do it over again, I would have handled that situation really differently. And I think that's part of the, the great thing of growing up. You become more mature, right? You're able to handle stressful situations a lot better. So that was one thing that I said. And it's funny how later on, after I got hired by the company, she told me when we were talking about it later on, I actually made it a point to say that, you know, you gave me a response that was kind of non-typical. It was not a typical response. People don't really talk about like personal lives. And then she said, you know, and what do you see yourself doing 30 years from now? And I told her that, you know what, the New York Giants, the football team, I want to be their general manager. That's my dream. It's, it might never happen. But I'd like to think that 30 years later, that's where I'm going to be. That I'm going to be the general manager of the Giants. So, you know, it's kind of like, you can, a great way, remember we talked about balance, right? I think it's great, a company wants to know, are you talented enough to, to do what a role requires? Every role in the company, right? From the most senior manager to the lowest administrative, the secretary, right? Everyone has a job function. You understand the word function, right? Right? So of course a company wants to know can you can you fulfill? Can you can you fulfill? Fulfill basically means can you do all your requirements? 
Can you fulfill the functions, right? But beyond that, what do you like as a person, right? And balancing is a, a great way. Just thinking about talking about real stories in your life. It's also important to, if there's something that you are passionate about, and this is the other piece, when you are interviewing, and they're talking about your experiences and the things that you have studied, right? Your resume is the snapshot of yourself, right? Remember, it's the one page picture of yourself. You need to know your resume like it's your hand. Just like you know on your hand exactly where all the lines are and everything. That's how well you need to know your resume. And here's another great, here, here, here's a great piece of advice that someone once gave me, right? It's called the one, two, five rule. You know, one, two, five rule. This is like, a, this is like a, someone that guided me through when I was applying for jobs, gave me this, taught me this. For every part of your resume, right, if it's work, if it's a special type of report that you used to prepare on a weekly basis, or if it's the fact that you like playing drums or the clarinet, right, you should have a one minute story about the clarinet, which means like a very short, but okay, yeah, I just like playing the clarinet. That's, it's been a, I've been playing the clarinet since I was five years old, right? But then depending on the level of interest, it's all about the other person, right? They're the ones who want to know. So if they're very interested about the fact that, oh, that's, is that right? I used to, then they might say something like, oh, I used to play guitar. I still play guitar sometimes. Well, guess what? If they start to show a little bit of interest, right, then you go to the two-minute version, the same story. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, my mom, I come from a musical family. My mom really wanted me to learn how to play the clarinet. Or my dad really encouraged me to play the drums, and I've always tried to make time for it. And then if they're even more interested, right, you see how this goes? Then you have the longest version of it, where you have all the details. You might end up spent talking for 10 minutes just about playing the drums. Then you could be like, yeah, I was in a band in middle school, and we used to play a lot of rock songs, and I, I also played in, in university, even though it was really tough. And I have a drum set at home, and my apartment's kind of small, so it's a small drum set, right? Or I keep my clarinet, like, with, I always carry my clarinet with me wherever I go, right? So that's where you really expand your story, right? So think about it. It's like you have the same story. You have a short version of it, you have a medium version of it, and you have the full version. And it all depends on how much interest the other person is showing. And we're going to talk about this in another area when we talk about the workplace, when we, when we really talk about observing people. It's very important for you to also look at the other person and observe their body language, right? To be like, you can tell, you know, the way that a person is acting, how interested they are. It's kind of like when you're out on a date with a girl, right? If she, if she keeps checking her phone and stuff like that, if she's not really looking at you while she's talking, if she's texting someone while she's talking to you, right? She's not too interested in you, right? But if she's focusing on you the whole time, this is little things, right? Body language tells you so much, like learning to observe people is an art that some people are really good at, but some people, if you really take the time to train yourself, you can get pretty good at it, right? So the thing is, it's all about observing the person that's interviewing you and understanding how interested are they in the fact that I work or, or I took a certain class in university. How interested are they? Right? So that's really, really important in terms of observing. So this one, two, five, rule was something that I think is very good to kind of practice on your own. You know, just to, because you know your resume, right? You wrote it. So you know that, you know, you wrote that I love traveling. Okay, so you can just say, oh, I love traveling. Oh, I like it too. That's it. Okay, let's talk about something else. And then if, you're, if your interviewer immediately changes the subject, what does that mean? That means they want to talk about something else, right? They're not too interested. So, so then you can't start talking about, oh, last year I went to Bali, and then I went to Mexico, and it's just so awesome. I took so many pictures every time I go. I take a lot of pictures, right? You can't really talk about all that stuff, right? So it really depends on, and some interviewers are like that, right? You, you should always have a skills and interest section, right? Because it's important for you to talk about who am I? What it, what's important to me? What do I care about aside from work, right? But some of you, I've been in interviews where no one even asks me about my interests. They simply focus that entire, half an hour or however long it is. They focus completely on my work, right? Or, or they'll talk about certain classes. They want to know what exactly I studied, right? And, and some, I've been in some interviews where out of half an hour, 20 minutes, we've just talked about 
my interests and the things, the places I've traveled and the things I do and the fact that if I sing, things like that, right? So it really depends on the person. It depends on the interviewer that you have, right? So those are just some of the things that are sort of, that I was kind of wanted to cover when we talk about interviewing. I think it's, interviewing is something that you get better at the more that you do. You know, the more interviews that you do. But remember the basic things. Body language, be confident, right? Really know your resume. You, you, you shouldn't have to stop to think about, okay, uh, what did I do at my last job? Or um, where did I travel last year? All of these answers you should prepare. You should look at the mirror. I mean, honestly, just stand at home, look at the mirror in your bathroom, right? And just practice that, you know, if he asks me this. They say, remember we talked about the word forecast? Remember forecast like the weather forecast, right? You're trying to forecast what types of questions could they ask me? And when they ask me those questions, what will my response be? Right? So it's important for you to forecast as well. It's all about practice. It's all about knowing yourself. You have to know yourself, right? And the other part is obviously like, you know, you're gonna do research about the company. A lot of the interview is also you asking questions, right? You asking about the company. What does this group do? Where does this, you know, this is okay, this is the finance group. Where is the head office? Where will I be reporting to? How many coworkers will, will I have? Things like that. You know, you want to do some, a lot of research about the company as well. But that's kind of obvious, right? Anytime you apply for a job, you're gonna be looking up the company a lot. Right? You're gonna read about the company and take notes. And you can even prepare questions on your own. I used to do this all the time. You study a company, right? And you prepare questions, or any organization. Right? And you say that these are the things that I genuinely want to know. You know, when I'm reading this, these are the questions that come into my head, right? So it's very important to think about that as well. But I just wanted to go over some basic, you know, hints about interviewing. Be confident, be organized, right? Make sure, make sure you look really good, because that is important. I know it sounds bad, right? It's like you should be thinking, why should they care, right? How I look and stuff like that. But it does, believe it or not, it does. So, um, so that's something that's like kind of pretty important. Right, so we've covered interviewing. Now, I wanted to go over a couple of other things. Communications and business. So, so writing emails is kind of, uh, you know, it, it, you, you do it all the time, whether or not you're emailing your friends, or if you're at work and your boss asks you something, right? So, first of all, what types of, you know the salutation, if I write, dear Minsu or dear Shinsuke, right? Um, that's important. When you're writing to someone that you don't know, do you think you would use dear? What do you think? When you're writing... For the first time? Yeah, when you're writing... Uh, no. Probably not, right? Because it's kind of weird, right? You don't know someone, but you're saying dear. You can actually just say their name. You can just put, like, John. Right? Comma, and then you start. Right? So that's important. And then later on, after you guys have exchanged some emails, then you can write dear John. But even then, I mean, I have people who I've been emailing back and forth for like a year or two, and we still just, he writes to me, Tommy, right? And I just write to him, Arthur. Right? It's just like we email back and forth for the longest time. So that's the first part, the salutation, right? How do you address someone who's actually doing the, you know, that you're sending the email to? Salutation. Salutation. It's like when you're giving a salute, right? It's like it's a greeting. A salute is a very formal version of giving someone a greeting, right? So your salutation is how you address the person, right? So the next piece is one of the one of the biggest problems that people have, right, is that let's say you have a very long piece of information that you need to send to someone, right? Maybe you are doing your daily report that you create at work, right? and you notice something was not right, you know, or you needed to ask them a very complicated question, right? Imagine an email 